Welcome to Local Rock Talk. My name is Paul, a.k.a. Pauza. This is a fourth very welcome back during pandemic started two years ago. Yeah. Please welcome Jason Lynch. Thank you. Great and, to be here again. Paul Thompson, a.k.a. Gage, and Paul the Range. That's right. And don't forget the slick sharks. Slick sharks too. <laughs> I'm, I'm just plugging all my different projects. That's all. Oh yeah. Okay. There it is. So the show has started. So we have some new questions this time. All right. So because Paul has not been on the show in a minute, it's mm -hmm. been a few, right? This I assume the majority of the questions first will go to Paul, right? Or, 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 or whatever you ask. Split it up, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, just keep it keep like, it fun. Like keep it a conversation. Yeah. If you yeah. ask a question, yeah. I'll give it a little bit, you give it a little bit. And right. Keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, I just, don't want to take So over. just chime in, whatever. I just didn't know if, like, because you had asked, like, can you send me some stuff you want to talk about? So I didn't know if you had, like, specific projects you wanted to mention like i don't know if you got pull the rain stuff coming out soon uh or? you know i got some stuff but i guess you know what i mean that'll be touched upon and uh okay as will rodney but yes. um you know yeah yeah so whatever All how right. are you pausa doing good yeah yeah you're rocking man thank you so much for what you do here yeah i gotta tell you bro i love the long hair on you Same. you're making me wish i didn't chop mine I know. But, uh, I, you know, the time had come. I didn't completely buzz it yeah. like, uh, you know, full. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, oh. man, the, the long hair looks great on you, dude. With the beard, you grow a better beard than me. <laughs> My beard comes in all blonde and white. It yeah. looks stupid. But <laughs> yours looks good. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. you're doing good over there. Oh, yeah. Like Paul said, congratulations. Exactly. Congratulations, man. Thank you for everything you do. No problem. So it's funny. I'm thinking back on the history because, like you were saying, we've yeah. known Paul's uh, what at least six, seven years at this point, including the very beginnings of local rock talk. Yeah. I've appeared many times. People, are, I'm sure, are sick of me. They're like, get this guy <laughs> out of here. Oh, no. But you also have appeared a, a few times, and yeah. we've never been on together. No? No. Oh, wow. No. This is cool. You no. were on like with Jail. You were on with... Um, Goof Troop. Yeah. Hulk was on there one time. Yeah. Um, the legendary Hulk. But you and I have never been on the show together. I'm yeah, happy to yeah, be pull here. The reins. Yeah, pull yeah, the reins. Yeah, pull the reins. You did a thing with... Yep. I'm not sure who who was here. That lineup. That. I think yeah. you guys were a trio at that point. The, yeah, yeah. The three pieces. Now yeah. it's a one guy situation. Hey, I know what For it's now. like. But I've got, a, I've, got, I've got a couple of musicians in the works that are learning the material. Good. I just don't want to put any... Uh, any names or dates or anything like that out yeah. there yet because we're, you know, yep. I do know. together. Yep. Yeah, you don't want to set limitations or deadlines if yep. it's going to hinder For uh, sure. perfecting the material yeah. and getting it out when it's yeah. ready. It's, it's, you know? There's a lot of work that happens behind the scenes yeah. with anything, a relationship, a band, a job, whatever the heck is going yeah. on. You know, even this show. Look, we got here, and Kelsey had set all of this up by herself. And it, it, this is such a cool studio. Yeah. I mean, it really yeah, is. I did some of it, too. Yeah. You did, too? Yep. Okay. The guitars Good. and stuff. Yeah, Hulk. you pitch in. Hulk. I mean, it's your show. All right. Who's this now? Hulk is chiming in. Oh, what's up, Hulk? <laughs> all right, ready for questions now? We're ready. I all see right. him laughing, but I'm okay, not sure we, what he's. Here we go. Okay. Number one. Yes. Who are your top Five favorite bands all of all time. Uh, I know right away. Go Do ahead. you want to go first? You first. Iggy Pop and the Stooges. Yep. Number one all time. Um, followed very closely, and it's like one degree of separation with the Misfits. Um, I favor the original Danzig era lineup. However, we have been lucky enough to meet i've met everybody except glenn from the two what you might consider like the classic lineups yeah so i've met uh jerry doyle obviously the doctor who is a great friend of ours shout out to Dr. Um, i've met michael graves i've met uh 
who am I forgetting? I've met the majority Robo. of... I believe I've met Robo. Des. I've met Des Katina. Yeah, I've, um, the only man that I have yet to meet, the reclusive Glenn, and I'm hoping one day to be yeah. able to do that because let me tell you this about the Misfits. I shouldn't get into too much detail, <laughs> but... I uh, got no. I'm not. Even, I'm not gonna <laughs> this I got guy my first tattoo when I was 17 years old, and it's this like half-assed Misfits logo. <laughs> That's how much I loved the band. Like yeah. I got a fake ID and traded some things and went to a shady tattoo parlor just so I could get tatted <laughs> up with the uh, with the Misfits uh, Crimson Ghost Fiend logo. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard they since bought that movie, The Crimson Ghost. I don't know yeah. anything about that. You could be right. I'm yeah. not sure. But Jerry and Glenn, I believe, co-own it. So that any any time the movie sells, or yeah. you know, because of interest people have wanting to know where the Misfits logo came from or whatever. The tattoo shop that I went to, yeah. which I will not name. Yeah. This was before tattooing was officially legalized in Massachusetts. Uh, so back at the time, you'd ha- you have to go to New Hampshire. Yep. This place would do trade. So let's say I came, <laughs> I would came across a VCR or I stumbled oh. across this or that, you know. Yep. I could bring that there and I would trade it and they would give you tattoos. Yeah. Nice. You know, no no cash necessary. So, so Iggy, <laughs> Iggy Pop and the Stooges. Oh, yeah, I'm getting way off track here. The Misfits. So Iggy Pop and the Stooges, the Misfits, Black Sabbath. Okay, awesome. The Ramones, Motorhead. Is that five? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll leave it. We'll leave it there. Yeah. Those yeah. are like top all-time favorites. Yeah, they're the ones that come to your, to your brain. So uh, they're the ones that I still listen to daily. Totally. Yeah. Like almost every single day. I know. Especially when I'm like working out or like you know yep. going for a ride. Always. They're the soundtrack to your life. Yeah. And it's hard for me because, I mean, the Ramones and the Misfits, you know, it's such a hard toss. Oh man. If I yeah, they're both amazing. The thing that caught me about the Misfits initially, yep. when we were coming up and starting to get interested in rock music yeah. and actually wanted to form a band and play, yeah. I had a great friend of mine who I haven't seen in years, this guy Nick, and he had an older sister who was very beautiful, by the way, and she had amazing taste in music. She had like this unbelievable collection of CDs, tapes, vinyl, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And it consisted uh, of a lot of punk stuff, a lot of kind of like, mm. it was around the time that alternative rock was huge, you yep. know what I mean? Like uh, that era. And the first time I heard Misfits, it was the Legacy of Brutality yeah. compilation. Yep. And I had never heard anything like it because it was combining like these beautiful vocal melodies, yep. so catchy, like so melodic, yeah. but with the most evil lyrics. Mm-hmm. and played aggressively. Yeah. And I'd never heard anything like it. And I was yeah. like, and then I started paying attention cuz around that time like the biggest bands were Guns N' Roses, Metallica. Oh, yeah. And then you'd see them on stage and they got the Misfits logo and yeah. they got all this. They so loved it. I became like obsessed. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever heard. Oh yeah. That dichotomy of like these happy awesome, you know, songs with these evil sinister yeah. horror movie type lyrics Themed lyrics yeah never heard anything like it or since you won't. nobody does it better well you know there's horror punk bands that you yeah know, but they came after it, and but they, yeah you know. but anyway that they, they, they use that as the template right exactly you know? that was the misfits was the original yeah. jumping off point exactly for that i mean you could argue sabbath but yeah yeah sabbath uh tended to be uh more you know, technically, Misfits were a very straightforward, in-your-face, yeah. like, simple guitar riffs, and, you know, very, uh, the songs were not as well, I don't want to say it, that's not the right way to say it, they they were just simpler, yeah. com- composed songs. Yeah, you yeah. Know? There, there weren't Sabbath was a little bit more, changes. you know, technical, and, yeah, yep. tunings. Yeah. And, but you know. but the Misfits are, are one of my all-time favorite bands, too. So, there's that. I, we also share another uh, commonality, that being Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath were the first heavy metal, hard rock, hard rock for Dave, the first hard rock 
band that I had got into. I had my aunt, my aunt's uh, boyfriend at the time had given me this uh, collection of tapes and suggested that I start from the top left, ending at the bottom right, and it was this sort of chrono uh, chronological order of you know hard rock turning to metal and thrash. The Misfits were in there. Guar were in there. Was it the Earth AD album? It was the Earth AD album. Yeah, that's a because yeah. that is like that's also a turning point with the Misfits where they almost moved into like more of a hardcore thrash yep. type of direction. Yeah. Um, so that's amazing, and that's like a a different. Yeah. That's like a demarcation point for me. You know what for, I mean? Yeah, I think they they like, started if 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 I'm if I'm correct, I think it was them. I think it was. I think it's considered one of the early, like, thrash, huge yeah. hardcore thrash yeah. crossover. Yep, yep. Along with know. bands like DRI yes. and things like that. Yeah. So know. Dave will love that because I know he loves oh, DRI. Yeah. He loves DRI. But, um, okay, so so we got Black Sabbath I mentioned, right? And, and like I said, it's a hard toss-up between the Ramones and the Misfits. Obviously, the Ramones came first. So without the Ramones, there would be no Misfits. Yeah, or even, you could argue, uh, they preceded even Sex Pistols. Oh, know? yeah. The Ramones were the first punk rock band. Right. I mean, there were the MC5, and there were Iggy and the Stooges. And yeah, and they call that proto-punk. Yeah. And I really hate that uh, term, because yeah. it, they call it proto-punk, then they call it post-punk. Yeah. Why isn't it just pre-punk? You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I hate when they over-categorize. Yeah. Well, it's, obvi it's, it's obvious. Like everything's got a genre for it. Yeah. A, you know, it's it's yeah. really the, annoys me. Clearly, the people that came up with the labels aren't punk. Right. Because they wouldn't even think about that. Shit. No, they're too busy trying to figure out, like, hey, how can we market this? Yeah, how, how to sound correct or intelligent as opposed to just saying what's on their mind. Mm -hmm. And that that's when you get the best stuff. But, oh, yeah. um, all right, so... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back. I'm going to start with the Beatles because the Beatles are probably my all-time favorite band. Mm -hmm. And without them, a lot of these other bands wouldn't exist. They opened the doors uh, production-wise and everything else, songwriting, um, in such a short span of time. You know, there are bands that I'm still a fan of that, are, that have put out far more records than them, that are, that are still touring, like Nine Inch Nails. You know, <clears throat> I love me some Nine Inch Nails. So... <laughs> the Beatles, Black Sabbath. I'm going to go with Nine Inch Nails. Um, I'm going to go I'm going to go with The Misfits. Only because I love the Ramones so much, but a good friend of mine happened to be in The Misfits. So and I I can thank you for getting introduced because we used to go to shows and he would figure out a way to meet the entire band, and then I got to meet them, mm -hmm. and now the doctor yep. is a friend of both of ours to this day, Doctor Chud, right. from the uh, reincarnated, like the um, American Psycho uh, yeah. album, ninety six. Yeah, when 2002, they in, when they reformed in the mid nineties. Yep. And uh, you always like kept up with them. You've collaborated with them yeah. on some yeah. recordings and yeah, different we, stuff. Well, we, we got to jam with them. Yeah, we got. Oh, that was I mean, the highlight of the. Yeah, that was amazing. Experience. That trip was. Unbelievable. Okay, so I, I said the Beatles, Sabbath, right? The Misfits, Misfits. Nine Inch Nails, mm -hmm. and one more, and that's tough. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of bands that I really, really like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna mention a band that's a little came came a little later to the game, that my girlfriend actually introduced me to musically, and they're called Carnival. They're from Australia, and I think that they have a great marriage of, of, of rhythm, melody, um, emotion. It's very, very amazing. Check out their album, Sound Awake, if you haven't already heard it. But uh, check that out. Shout out to uh, Gene the Machine, Freeman over there, and Sean Bevan as well. They, they work with a ton of artists that I've since got into because of their involvement. So... Yeah, far, uh, you know, a, a lot of them, you know, let's just say that, like The Shining in Norway and uh, Presto Meco and, and all these other bands. But, yeah, th that that would have to be my five. All um, right. Yeah. Sorry to have made that so complicated. <laughs> no, it may, 
Dude, I could go on. Yeah. I could give you 25. Yeah, I, I've really got so many favorite bands that yeah. the thought of just trying to choose one is... You almost feel bad. Yeah. Because it's you're like, like I, I want... What to am I forgetting? There's so many. Yeah. <laughs> we are, and we are forgetting them. Yeah. We are. I've written lists like, like, I love Tool. I love Rage Against the Machine. Mm -hmm. You know, amazing bands, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, dude, tons of other bands. Yeah. I can't think of... Muse. I love Muse. I love Radiohead. Uh... So you and I, we've seen The Misfits many times. Yeah. As I mentioned, like huge influence on both of us. We've met the, a large portion of the members of various eras. Yep. I don't think we ever uh, got to see Iggy Pop no. together. No. So Iggy Pop, for me, and the Stooges, and I got to see the reformed Stooges before uh, Ron Ashton and Scott Ashton died. Oh. It was amazing, and I got to meet them, and I got to shake their hands, and I got to say, dude, thank you. Wow. Um, but apart from that, when Iggy was on various solo tours, yep. he's probably the one band I've seen the most. Yeah. And I'm just surprised that you and I never got to go to an Iggy show because we've been to so many. You know? Dude, I, I But mean, um, the other band apart from that that I've probably seen almost as much is Social Distortion. I've seen yeah. at least 20 times. Yeah. Who was your favorite favorite concert of all time like i mean i'm a huge like actually there live in person watching the show yeah i'm a huge old school <coughs> Marilyn manson fan you know like every yeah. like up to hollywood i loved everything from hollywood back and uh, i've been to a lot of their shows and i was blown away during you know the dutch of the world tour and that was incredible and that changed my life and i was i was amazed by the whole thing but the best show that i'd ever seen I will mention after you mentioned the best show that you've ever seen. So yeah. two come to mind right away. <coughs> yeah. Iggy okay. at what was then called Avalon on Lansdowne Street in okay. Boston. Ben, yep. So um, some there twice. Yeah. Both times I nearly fought my way onto the stage because there's a point in a lot of his shows yeah. where he calls fans up oh, and nice. pulls you on. And I'm like, man, I'm going. But, I, you me, know, yeah. I just... I didn't quite make it, and then the security was like, get out of here. You yep. know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. So um, definitely Iggy, and then I would say the time that I saw Motorhead, OzFest, I want to say probably 90, maybe 97. Yeah. They were playing the side stage. Oh, wow. They weren't even on the big stage. Really? They should have been. That's disrespectful. Well, in a way, but I got to be True. front row. True. And I got to like – better wait like, yeah yeah i got to like fist bump lemmy no, i shit. really did man really and they were so, how did it feel like it was amazing it was like that it was just a very, hard you hit him yeah 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 but it, like just yeah just, yeah you, you only the, get near him for in the a moment second. it's fuck everything like, and uh, is, <laughs> you just live for the moment you can edit that can we out, swear right? on this <laughs> you're not supposed to no, um, swear, right? you, they'll cut it out yeah just bleep it but you got the real deal <laughs> motherfucker but, they, <laughs> <laughs> but they'll cut it out all right um yeah. Yeah. So, so Stooges and Motorhead. Yeah. So my favorite show that I'd ever seen, and I was so moved <laughs> by it, were the Cramps. Yes, I saw the Cramps also. Dude. Same venue I was just talking about back yep. when it was called. It might have even been Access. Do you remember there was Access and Avalon? Yeah. That were kind of side by side on Lancaster Street. Access was on the left. I think. Access was smaller. Yeah, yeah. Avalon was like the bigger, and then it became House of Blues yep. and whatever it is now. Yep. Um. Yeah, I saw the cramps. That the cramps. was an amazing show too, dude. Lux and and again, uh, we we were lucky. Enough. Poison Ivy, Slim Jim, got to we hung around. We got to meet him. Really? Yep. Wow, very very lucky. Right. Yep. Can I have some more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Let's yeah, get back yeah, to sure. these questions, dude. We could talk yeah. music all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, what's your fondest memory of performing? You want me to say this one? God damn right I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One it's time. obviously performing with me. One time. <laughs> I, I, my favorite performance, uh, well, well, memorable performance. Yeah. You know, yes, of course, everything we've, we've done, especially that one night at the Crow's Nest. Oh. Yeah, that was. Uh, we, w we don't have to get into That like was a wild uh, show there. But, um, but, yeah, so my most memorable moment. Had to have been playing with the band that I was in in Los Angeles prior to moving back to Mass, and we played at the Viper Room, and that was like 
it was just this super small venue for for those of you that have been there it was really tiny i mean but um but just the history of it and and the expression that i that i see on people's faces when i tell them that i've played there and that we opened for the la guns which was a which huge deal in los angeles of course and and for anyone that knows that 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 music but um 48 Rooms opened for them in Lawrence, of all places. No shit. The LA That's Guns, crazy. Yeah, this was like early 2000s. Yeah. For whatever reason, there was a venue that was doing all types of different music. It yeah. would do like electronic nights. It had rock bands. It was co- They called it the Grand Hall. Okay, I heard of it. Yeah, and we randomly, LA Guns was playing. That's so weird. And we got on the opening gig. So they roll up in this tour bus on Essex Street in Lawrence, S- these like... L.A. Yeah, rockers, Yes, man, these the L.A. rockers shit with in the, the back yeah. and long in the front. Yeah, yeah. Well, at that show, Sean Lennon was in the audience, the manager of my band at the time, Josh Richmond. Uh, those of you might be familiar with his uh, with his role in A River's Edge with Keanu Reeves and Crispin Glover and a few others. Um, anyway, he managed my band there and got us that show. And thank you, Josh, if you ever see this. But um, that was that was an incredible show, and it was actually the night that the band essentially split. So, but at that show, I remember in front of me was Sean Lennon, and me being such a big Beatles fan. I remember him saying, "Oh, this is Sean. This is so and so." And I remember shaking Sean Lennon's hand. You know, it looked something like this. You know, but um, that was that was really nice. You know, um, yeah, and we just performed and. And Slash was there. I remember seeing Slash there, and a bun- and um, and uh, Edward Furlong was there. I remember bumping into him in the stairwell as I was going up. He was coming down. He was sweating in a in a white tank top, mm. really profusely. like I am now from these lights. Yeah, like profusely, <laughs> like wet. But yeah. um, Terminator Two. If you haven't seen it, check it out, man. All right. So yeah, the cramps. All right. What uh, what was the question? And we get sidetracked, dude. Because you cramps. get that you get me and Paul talking. Cramps. We'll we'll talk all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. About yeah. anything. I we, love to do. We that. have a strong history. I've yeah. known this guy since I was a yeah. teenager. The, the more, oh, <coughs> the Hulk. What's up, Hulk? Just type in your question if you want to join the conversation. Yeah, the Hulk. The Hulk is chiming in, everybody. We. Yeah. I'll read you what he says. So the Hulk is a legend. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no question. This For guy, I mean, if you're from the Merrimack Valley, yep. I mean, everybody knows yeah. the Hulk. So when he wants to chime in with the question, we'll try to get that in. Um, Hulk, if you if you can hear me, just type it. Try to type it in the comment, and that's probably the best way to get through. Yep. So anyway, what yeah. what what were we talking about? We we're what talking the about the the last awesome performance that we did, and yours was. Yeah, my. You want to know my best performance of all time? Yeah. So there are two that immediately come to mind. One of which, when I was in high school, I had a couple different bands with Matt Rowe, okay. Dowell Trevetti, yep. amazing guitar player. Um, Players. Right. Yeah, both of them. Like Matt Rowe's one of my all-time guitar heroes, as yeah. is Dowell. Yeah, yeah. Um, two different we got styles. to play the totally. Hat Shell. We got to play at the Hat Shell in Boston, so that is just such a like iconic mm-hmm. venue because yeah. it's right on the river. It's an outdoor venue. Yep. It's huge. We were playing to like a hundred people. There, yeah. it, it's not like we were, you know. Yeah, yeah. But just to play there yep. and at that age, I was. I want to say I was sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. Damn, that's that's young. And I that. stage dived and I was doing all this nice. crazy like it, people like. You know, because the hat shell, that's where, like, the Boston Pops plays on 4th of July. You know what I mean? It's its generally, they do do rock shows there. They ha- I saw many free rock shows. I saw, like, Green Day there in 1994, and, yeah. like, a riot broke out because so many more people showed up than they yeah. thought were going to be of there. Of course. So, anyway, to play on that stage was really cool. And then uh, opening for the Misfits was absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, the later day. It was Dez on vocals. It was yeah. Jerry, and it was Marky Ramone. I got to meet Marky Ramone. Wow! So yeah, Marky the, Ramone opened for the Cramps at the show yeah. in Rhode Island that I was at. Yep. So. so that was after like they had gone through the Michael Graves and Dr. Chud yeah. era when they were part of the band. Yeah. This was later. This would have been what was the one famous 
Monsters? Um, no, it was uh, Hits from the Crypt. It was like a... Oh, okay. Oh, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were touring that. Okay. 48 Rooms got to open, and it was Damn. jammed wall to wall. Crazy. And at that point in time, that was kind of like the peak of 48 Rooms, and we had people in attendance who knew every word to every song. Wow. You could just throw out the mic and go... Control. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I played with you guys for a little bit. You did. You did, I yeah. Think but uh, I think um, I think you came on board maybe a little after that. Yeah. No, for sure. Obviously, dude, I would remember that. That's. It was unbelievable, dude. It yeah. was so much fun. And then I spent most of the time, like, crowd surfing. Yeah. You know, and just letting them sing because we, we had such a – good turnout and a lot of people who at that time were very familiar with our music and then you get to hang around and watch the misfits of and course. obviously That's it's huge. not glenn danzig but it's still you, have, you know authentic you must misfits, have been like elated you know? with excitement and but it, it so natural yeah. as well because you were such a fan it was yeah it was cool because i you know des was in black flag which, who i'm also a fan of yeah so there's that, that history yeah. Drink and then black coffee. Ramones, you know, yep. like Marky yeah. Ramon is there. Again, oh, yeah. not the original drummer of the Ramones, yeah. but still a Ramon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then um, Jerry. It, yeah, it's just so cool to think back and when having you, met these people. When you visualize it and you talk about it at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's one it's thing to be a fan and to meet them, which yep. is amazing in and of itself. But yeah. when you get booked All to right. play shows with these guys. It's going to be like another five minutes. So you're okay. Not Really? Yeah. Another five minutes. That's yeah. all we got, folks. Uh, Paul's a run through the questions. We're not going to elaborate. We'll just tell you our answers because I want to make sure you get what you need. All right. Is that cool, Jay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm over answering every question. Dude, me too. And still want to talk about that, too. All right. Let's yeah. do that now. Let's get that yeah. out of the way. Yeah. Let's talk about the bike. Okay. okay. So let's talk about Paul's amazing bike that was built for him by the folks over at Clean River Project, yeah. right? Yep. I got this right, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. So it's got the working, playable electric guitar built into the frame of the bike with an amplifier also built into the bike in the rear. And it has now been mount, uh, mounted onto a stand for historical preservation Jeez. because it's such an important part of local rock history that uh, he no longer rides it around town. Yep. But it's stationary. you never know. Maybe someday. Oh, we didn't talk about my retirement. But yeah. maybe one day you'll bring this out of retirement and ride it around town, we right? Can, we can discuss the retirement on here while they're breaking things yeah, yeah, down. Yeah. So yeah. that's at least documented. All well, right. So keep on rocking, man. We've got to hear your questions. All, All right. right. Well, we're going to do like two more questions. That's it. Okay. Flat like through. Set. It's five more minutes. So. Flat Hit through me them, quick. Bro. Let's do it. All right. Talk about the guitarist of the five. Okay, five. Just say their names. Yeah, just say their names. All right, cool. Like guitarist that I I love. Yeah. Okay, um, I love a lot of guitar player players that I cannot play like. Are we talking like local people or no, famous no, no. musicians? No, no, everybody. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I mean Eddie Van Halen is like a huge guitar hero of mine. Um, Obviously, I love a lot of the punk stuff, which is less technical, but nonetheless, to me, yep. is like amazing. Like so Johnny Ramone. Yeah, it, exactly. Um, razor sharp. Yeah. Dude, it's crazy. Um, Sex Pistols, Steve Jones yep, did yep. so much cool stuff. Yep. You know, there's so much you can do when you're not yeah. so focused on technicality and precision yeah. and all the theory stuff. Like, I think for his time, and the same can be said of the Stooges. Yep, yeah. Um, uh, Ron Ashton. Uh, James Williamson, who came along later, yeah. played with Iggy on, on a couple Stooges records and solo yeah. records. Um, those are my ones. Yeah, Wh yeah, what yeah. about uh, you? Let's see, just to get through them. Uh, let's start off with uh, Tony Iommi, Daisy Berkowitz, Johnny Ramone, um, damn, uh, Adam Jones from Tool, and let's say Tom Morello. From Rage Against the Machine, all, all inspired me heavily. All right, all right. I have all my question. Then we talk about your retirement. Sure. And that's it. All right. We're gonna talk about favorite songs of Curfew. That my favorite songs from Curfew. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, have you heard the album? Forest Lawn. You like Forest Lawn? And um, uh, 
it's on the tip of my tongue, the one that you made that amazing video for, uh, Terror Vision? Terror Vision. Th those definitely, for me, Yeah. I love both of those. Yeah, me, amazing. well, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, shout out to uh, my buddy Chris from the band Take Us Alive. He's the drummer of that band, and he's the one who directed and edited Terror Vision. So shout out to Chris. I, I can't, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, otherwise I'd say it. But um, anyhow, my favorite songs in the album, um, what is it called? Trinity. I think Trinity's, Trinity's great. Glass House was great. Too. Glass House. Uh, so Trinity, uh, Mirror, Mirror, those songs. I, I, yeah, I like them. They're kind of, you know, uh, get overshadowed by the stuff I turned into videos. But when I hear back, when I listen back to the album, when I'm like to relearn the material, Trinity he stands out heavily for me, especially the verses, just in the twist that it takes from that sort of 50s sort of uh, big chorus feel and then to this sort of, you know, other vibe for the verses. I dig it. You got another one? Another question? Uh, I think that'll be it. Okay. So All that's right, it. All right. That, that will be it for this episode. So thanks for watching Local Rock Talk, and please be safe out there with this COVID-19 door pandemic. Wash your hands, stay away from <clears throat> others. See you next time on Local Rock Talk. All right. All right. Thank you for having us, brother. Yo, Paul's a thank you so much, man. Thanks for coming on. You got it. So you want to... Thanks for watching Local Rock Talk with your host, Paul Zagreeli. <laughs>